everyone. Welcome back to Synthetic Biology 1. Today it's time for some colony PCR. Colony PCR is a very useful technique to amplify any type of specific sequence on either the DNA of the genome of a bacteria or a plasmid. Yesterday I transformed my bacteria with a plasmid and now I want to use colony PCR to check if the plasmid is actually there. Let's get my Petri dishes from the incubator. Oops. So here I have two plates. One plate with colonies that should have the plasmid that I transformed. And this plate has colonies from a bacterial strain, the same strain as this one, but without the plasmid. And I'm going to use this as a negative control. So before I can start to prepare the PCR reaction mix, I first have to release the DNA from these cells because otherwise they're not accessible for the polymerases that need to amplify the DNA. I'm going to mark three colonies on this, uh, on this plate with the bacteria that carry my plasmid to know which colonies I actually checked. So let's pick this one. This is number two, and here I have number three. And I'm going to use this negative control colony. All right. So I also labeled some PCR tubes with the same numbers to know exactly which colony went into which PCR tube. The idea is to uh, take a small volume of water So I'm taking 10 microliters here. And here I have some wooden sticks that I can use to pick each colony. And just dip it into the liquid, mix a little bit with the stick, and then you're good. So I'm doing this for two other ones. And finally, the negative control. So that's step one. Now we need to go to the PCR machine to heat the different tubes. Put them inside the machine. And I set the temperature at 98 degrees. 10 minutes should be good. I press start. OK, so this is done. Now I can start with the preparation of the PCR mix. So in this protocol, I'm going to use a tech polymerase. This tech polymerase lacks proofreading activity, meaning that it doesn't check if it made a mistake during the DNA polymerization. But for this case, I don't really care because I'm only going to visualize my DNA fragments on gel, and I'm not going to use the DNA later on in other experiments, for example, to construct a plasmid. So if you're interested in having an amplified sequence that's very, that very correct, I would re recommend you to use different polymerase, uh, for example, a high fidelity polymerase, not the tech. But the advantage is that for the tech polymerase, we have already a pre-mixed cocktails cocktail that contains all the components, all the reagents that we need to do this PCR mix using tech. 
Um, and that will save us some piperting steps. As you saw before, I have four different tubes. So I want to do four individual PCR reactions. Uh, and instead of making every reaction separately, I first will prepare a master mix. This master mix will contain all the components for the reaction. And later on, I will divide the master mix into four tubes for each individual PCR reaction. So what we need is, of course, our DreamTech mix, some water, a forward primer, and a reverse primer. So I already made the calculation to know how much of each component I need to add in order to uh, be sufficient for four reactions. And so I will add 26 microliters of water. Ten microliters of my reverse primer. Ten microliters of my forward primer. And finally, Um, 50 microliters of the Dream Tuck Master Mix. Okay. So this is good. Then I'll take some PCR tubes. So I labeled my, um, my tubes with one, two, three, and with a minus for the negative control. And I will now add to each tube 24 microliters of master mix. Okay. So I think my um, bacterial cells are ready. Yes, they are. So I take them out. And I will add one microliter of every heated bacterial solution to every tube that contains the PCR reaction mix. So number one goes in number one. Number two. Goes in number two. Number three. Three. And finally, the negative control. in the fourth tube. So that's it. Oh, wait. Yes, our tubes are ready. 
The cells are inside the PCR reaction mix, and the only thing we need to do now is take them to the PCR machine, place them inside, and I will set the temperatures as following. So I'm going to use in the first step uh, 95 degrees for three minutes, then the second step to open DNA uh, 95 degrees for 30 seconds, then in the third step I'm going to use 55 degrees for 30 seconds to make the primers anneal to the DNA. In the fourth step, I'm going to use uh, 72 degrees for one minute, because it takes more or less one minute to amplify a DNA sequence of 1,000 base pairs. Uh, and in my case, the DNA fragment that I expect to see is indeed around this number of, uh, of base pairs. Then, um, step two until four are repeated for 30 times. And finally, we have a, a final extension step at 72 degrees for five minutes. And then we'll end the reaction by cooling it down. My volume is 25 microliters, as you can see here. So I think we're good to go. I can press run. OK. And there we go. So we're about three hours later, and our PCR is done. I'm going to take them out of the machine. So the tubes are done, and the next step for our colony PCR would be to visualize them on an agarose gel. So I would load the samples into the gel and check the size of the, of the fragments to see if the correct one is present. But of course you could also use it to, uh, in, other, in other situations, you could also use these reactions uh, in, uh, in other downstream applications. Maybe you just want to uh, purify the, the PCR reaction directly using a cleanup kit, uh, or maybe you want to, uh, to sequence the DNA that you amplified. So this is it for now. I hope you learned a lot, and I hope to see you next time. <laughs>